there's a couple people ask, you know, what type of tank do I use for this game? You want to have one tank that's very fast, one that has really strong frontal armor or all around armor, one that has the highest penetration, and one that has uh, the best DPM. And there might be other criteria. For example, for a fast tank, you would probably use one of the wheeled vehicles or a light tank, a fast one. The RU-251 uh, used to do 95 kilometers, I believe, before they uh, reduced it down to 90. And then the best armor is the Mutant. Um, I don't remember the, the code number. It's got 290 millimeter armor. The Chrysler K is another good example. The Defender is another good example. So you want to, or the VK-101. Uh, P, uh, having that and you use it in the right situation, the best penetration is going to be something like the UDAS or the STRV, which has a penetration of something like 286 with regular rounds, which will one shot, will, which will destroy basically anything. You know, it'll destroy all those strong armored tanks. And uh, so for the fastest, uh, you know, just look at the speed. Uh, for the best armor, uh, I would recommend the Mutant or maybe a T-28 or a Defender. You want to use the fast tanks when you have to scout, obviously, when you have to kill an objective that's far away. It takes about two minutes to drive from uh, Cap D to Cap F with a fast tank. So if you're at Cap D and you have to help Cap F and you want to drive across, it's going to take you two minutes to get there. How do I know? Because I did the drive. Uh, so uh, with the best armor, like if you're on cap C and your tanks keep getting destroyed, go out with a strong armored tank and it's going to be more difficult for the enemy to destroy your tank. So you're not only going to have the best DPM and the best armor and the fastest, but you're going to use it in the proper situation. So for the best penetration, look at where I am on the minimap. There's going to be tanks that are going to line up not exactly in this position, but a little bit to the left of it, and they're going to be very hard to penetrate. But if you have a high penetrating gun, you'll be able to penetrate their frontal armor. This tank is the Emil, and the Emil cannot penetrate the front of a lot of tanks with regular rounds. But when I pulled out the Udus, it was it was destroying everything. The frontal armor of tanks cannot uh, protect against an Udus, so pulling out with the UDIS in the right sniping position. Over here, you see there's an SU-130 PM. That's the position where you want to pull up with an UDIS, and you, you're you going to be able to snipe the frontal armor. Another example is when the tanks start heading towards F, and they use this corridor. You sit at the other end of the corridor with your high-penetrating gun, and you, and you damage everything. So choose the right tank based on its characteristics for the right position. Uh, one of the strategies is that you want to use strong armor whenever you're assaulting a cap or if you're defending the final objectives. Whenever you need to stay alive, you want to use the strong armor. And the best tank is the mutant. Uh, as long as you can protect your sides, the front of that is like 290 millimeters. It's practically impenetrable. In general, speed is more important than any other aspect of the game in Frontline. And the reason why is because of the long distances that you have to travel, whether it's within a sector or to enter a sector or to leave a sector, uh, to be able to relocate, to chase down the enemy, to get from one place to another, to go to a physical location such as a cap or, or to reposition on a flank, speed is far more important than armor. I don't use the APCR rounds. I prefer to just get on the side or the rear, and I often am on the rear of enemy tanks. And what I'll do now is if I see a tank in a corridor and I have a fast tank, I will drive across the map to get behind him to shoot at him from behind because they usually don't react fast enough for me to do damage to them. So speed is way more important than anything else. In, take Always take it into consideration when you choose which tank you play. So when you are capping, you're often, if there's a heated battle, you're going to need strong armor. And likewise, when you're defending, if it's if you're defending the cap, you might need a gun that has high penetration. Uh, in this example, the UDES-03 
does 286 penetration, I believe, with the regular rounds. So this thing is going to damage anything. It's going to damage no matter what angle you hit. Almost any tank is going to get damaged, and you're going to be able to uh, block the cap, delay the cap, reset the cap, etc. So use the, uh, the right characteristic depending on what situation you're in. The, the other time you're going to use the high pen gun is when you have to hit the frontal armor. For example, if you're on a corridor and the enemy is advancing and you don't have time to get around the side, you want to pull out those high penetration guns. The other time I would use it is when I'm defending the objectives. You want to prioritize the tank based on the terrain or where you are. For example, when you're capping B and C and you're worried about dying, you want to bring in your heavy armor. But the same is true when you're, for example, defending the final objectives. When I'm defending the final objectives, you want to use a high penetrating gun like a tank destroyer. However, if the enemy is overwhelming your positions, you're going to want to use a well-armored tank destroyer like the uh, WZ-131GF, I believe is one of them, uh, the Yag Tiger 8.8. You know, something like a Rheumatol Borsig or a Scorpion G might not be a good idea if you if you have a lot of enemy tanks overrunning you, uh, but it might be a good idea if you don't have a lot of enemy tanks overrunning you. So then you have another situation where certain maps like E is going to work really well for heavily armored tanks because there's a lot of corridors, and there's corridors on F also. And obviously the ones that are a bit more open, like D and F, are going to be good for light tanks. Objective 1 is good for light tanks, and Objective 5 is good for light, light tanks. So if I'm going to spawn on one, I might take a fast light tank, and what I do is I just run around like crazy between the buildings, spotting as much as I can to help my team so they don't have to use up the recon flights. Uh, if you go to 2, you want a fast tank destroyer. Uh, if you go to 3 or 4, I would use a heavily armored tank such as a Yag Tiger or a VK-100-01P. If you go to five, you're going to want to use something with high penetration over long distance uh, or a, fa a reasonably fast tank that you can move around. Uh, so pick the tank based on the terrain that you're fighting on and use the criteria based on the characteristic, the penetration, how much damage it does, how much armor it has, how fast it is, other characteristics, uh, maybe an autoloader. Sometimes, like for example, if the time is running out, I might pull in with an autoloader to defend the final objectives because I know I'll be able to get four shots in with rapid succession that I might not be able to do with a regular gun. So pick your tank based on those situations. In general, autoloaders have a huge advantage in frontline because a large number of the tanks will be caught out in the open. And you want to be able to hit them really fast as many times as possible before they can retreat. Uh, this is an example of an enemy tank who wants to rush the sea cap. And if I have a loaded autoloader, he's just never going to make it. I don't have enough shots to kill him, but I have enough to get him to become a one-shot, which means that he'll be vulnerable to my allies who will be able to kill him. So he might think that he can go after the guy on the cap who can only fire back with one shot, but if I have an autoloader and I'm defending, I can get him down so that the guy on the cap can finish him off. So autoloaders are very important for hit and run tactics and just in general in the game. Anybody who's get who gets caught in the open, uh, if you have autoloaders like the Progetto 46 or the IS-3A or the AMX-1375 uh, or any of those tanks, uh, they're going to perform very well in this game. One of the things that I do occasionally is I add vehicles using the compare vehicle feature and I configure them to put uh, the configuration that I think I'm going to use when I'm playing and I use uh, this feature let's say it says average penetration and I look across and I find the tank that has the highest penetration so that way I know okay if I'm in a clutch and I need to damage some tanks perhaps on their frontal armor and I need high penetration that's the tank that I'm going to play so use the compare feature 
uh, to find out what tank to play. You're also going to want to use it for survival survivability to see which tank has the highest hull armor. In this case, it's the M48 Patton. And you might want to do it also for another feature such as speed or for spotting. I'm just going to go through some of my favorite tanks that I enjoyed playing uh, with Frontline. The Progetto 46 absolutely is my go-to tank. That's the tank that I prefer to start every game with unless I'm leveling up tanks. If uh, I do have some tanks that I'm leveling up, but the Progetto 46 is a good all-around tank. The AMX CDA, I had a lot of great games with the AMX CDA. It's got good speed and it's got pretty good penetration. Um, I have AMX 1390 written down, but I'm pretty sure that's now a tier 9 tank. So maybe it's a, a Bat Chat 12T, I think, is a tank. And you know what? I never played the Bat Chat 12T. But that style of tank, the ELC Even 90, I use this tank when I want to spot without being spotted or if I want to cap without being spotted as my sneaky tank. So the ELC even 90 has its uses. A Yag Tiger I would use if I have to put up a strong defense and I want that rapid fire gun if I'm in the town and defending the objectives. Uh, the Chrysler K if I want to cap and I need that strong armor. But, you know, I have the Mutant and the Mutant also does really well. Um, when capping and the defender does also. I love the T92. It's low profile. It's got a rapid fire gun. I, I guess it's pretty accurate. Like the ELC even 90 has a horrible gun. It's just a waste of time. But the T92, uh, you can do a lot more close combat. And uh, the VK 101P, I used to enjoy playing. The Waffen Traeger, I, I thought I was going to have horrible games. I ended up starting every game with the Waffen Traeger until I leveled it up. Yeah, that was a lot of games, and I had great games with it. I was amazed at how much damage I was doing, even though it was a low pen gun. If you know that you're going to get into a heavy battle, you're probably going to want to spawn a heavy tank that has strong armor. Armor is going to be a lot more important than the penetration of your gun. So uh, pay attention to what you're getting into. When you play a certain class of tank, let's say it's a medium autoloader, a light tank, a super heavy tank, etc., if you've got a lot of tanks, I have like 140 tanks or something like that, make sure that you've got the adequate number of tanks to accomplish what you want to do. So in this case, we're talking tier 8, and I'm going to look at light tanks, and you'll notice that I have four of them. In general, I switch between three different tanks, and I'm going to explain why. The reason why is because I'm playing the WZ-132 because I'm trying to level it up. And when I play Frontline, it's the, I level up tanks like crazy. The, the pain and suffering and the grind is a lot easier in Frontline than random battles. So I level up. Leveling up tanks is my priority. I only go into these other tanks if I have a special need for playing that tank. Uh, if this one is either um, unplayable or maybe this one, if I want to cap, this is a little stealthy capper. It's rare that I need to get into the M41. This is my last choice. It's rare that the other tanks are unable to be played because when you die, you have to wait like five minutes before you can play that tank again, and you have to switch into the other tank. So make sure that for every tank class, like for heavy tanks, I've got plenty of them to choose from. Make sure you have an adequate number, like three or four tanks to pick from to accomplish what you want to do. When you play in random battles, after every game, you can make changes to your tank. You can change your crew. You can change your ammo layout. You can change your consumables. Uh, you can change your directives, etc. However, in Frontline, when you die and you respawn, you cannot make any changes to these things. So you need to have all of them set exactly the way you want them to be set before you press start, before you press battle and join the game. You want to make sure, for example, if you want to play this tank, you want to make sure that you return your crew. So make sure you check all those things. And not only that, for example, if you have two American heavy tanks, you might want to arrange it so that both of them have a crew. 
Uh, for example, you notice that when I switched my crew into this tank, it took it away from the Chrysler K. And if I put it into here, it's going to take away from the T26E5 because it went into the M6A2E1. And if I go to the Chrysler K, guess what's going to happen? You'll notice that my crew remained in the m 6A2E1, and the reason why is because these are the two tanks that I've pre-configured when I play Frontline, because they have strong armor. These other heavy tanks do not have strong armor, so I don't have them pre-configured to play Frontline. One of the things that I do is I take certain tanks and I make it so that the tank only has high explosive rounds. Uh, you can look at this example. This is a VK-101P. You want to do it with something like a Scorpion G or a Rheinmetall Borisig or something like that. I do it with my Scorpion G. So my Scorpion G only has high explosive rounds. And the reason why is because there's certain situations where high explosive rounds can be used at a huge advantage where regular rounds cannot. For example, if you have to go against the frontal armor of tanks and you don't have enough penetration. Or in this example, you can see that I'm sh shooting at objective three from 639 meters away and I'm doing damage. I did 68 damage on the shot, which is shown over here on the lower left. And I can hit that from far away. Look at the minimap, how far I am from objective three. 639 meters. You need HE rounds to cause that damage. So I have a tank specialized for doing that. And you might also want to have a tank that specialized only with high penetrating APCR rounds. So let's say you have two heavy tanks, or let's say you have the IS-3A, the Defender, the WZ-111, the IS-6, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pick one of those tanks and just load it up with APCR rounds only. So if you have to respawn and you're like, you know, F it, I'm going to go in with the highest rounds I can get and just do whatever I can, you want to have that tank ready because you cannot change the ammo once the game starts. And you're probably going to want to do it every time you play Frontline. One way that you can make more money when you play is find a tank that is cheap to repair or find ammunition that is less expensive. You'll notice that this is 255 per round, and this is for the T26E5, and, and the penetration is 230. So let's look at this tank. The penetration is 225, and look at that. The cost is 1,025 per round. Well, how much damage does it do? This does 330 to 550 damage, and this does... 180 to 300 damage. So it does a little bit more than half, but it's a third, the, no, it's a quarter the price. So you can look at the cost of your ammunition, which is going to be a big expenditure in your game, and also the repair cost. Some tanks are cheaper to repair. You can use the internet to find out what your repair costs are, and you can have a, a game that's more profitable based on going through your tanks and finding the one that's the cheapest to operate.